Welcome back to Outside the Barn, where JD and I are gassing up our mini Jeep. And we're going to do a mini road trip in the mini Jeep. This will be fun. Yeah. So I meant to actually do this like after we drove it out of the crate. But, uh, well, we've just been having fun with it instead. So here we are. Tomorrow morning, you and I are going to head out into the wilderness mm -hmm. and drive a bunch of gravel roads and see how far... We can go in this street legal vehicle. As you can see, we have the orange triangle, which means we can do whatever we want. And a flag, so that we don't get ran over. Technically, these are legal in my county, so uh, we should be just fine to drive it on the road. Uh -huh. yeah. Probably. Yeah, probably. It's basically a side-by-side, -side, you know. Under the hood of this is a longitudinally mounted... I don't know if that's how you say that. It's a traditionally mounted little 125 cc engine fuel tank on top exhaust comes out the front it's kind of goofy but it works we put a knockoff Makuni carburetor on it uh, get a little more top end out of it maybe and we also removed the governing screw off of the throttle pedal mm -hmm. uh, we've had it reach about 40 miles an hour or so we're about to head out and as usual i'm starting my morning off with ag1 let's go grab the mini jeep and on my way to the mini jeep, I will enjoy my AG1. AG1 is backed by research studies. You know, nutrition really starts in the gut. And look, frankly, when you live like I do, you need all the help you can get, right? So the probiotics in AG1, I think, really help me out. When it tastes good, I drink it every single morning. I wouldn't if I didn't believe in it. Now, I'm always talking about the probiotics and those research studies, but did you know that in a research study that they did, the participants in it, 97% at 30 days felt like they had more energy, and I can attest to that. It's a lot easier for me to get up and moving when it's bright and early in the morning like this. Go to drinkag1.com slash drinkag1.com slash outside the barn. I had the wrong channel there for a minute. Or scan this QR code right here, and you'll get a one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2, and five free travel pouches, which I use all the time when I'm on the road. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Well, let's, uh, let's go drive a mini Jeep, like, 50 miles. Well, you ready? This is gonna be cold. I know one thing. I'm hungry. Yeah. McDonald's is about six miles away. It's in town. It's legal. Yeah. It's got a triangle on it. Totally. All right. Not bad for no show. It's quite chilly. Hold up a little. This is the only part that scares me. We do have to drive on pavement for a little bit. Mm -hmm. People haul ass down my road here. Uh, <laughs> Great. We uh, got turn signal on. Am I good? There.
So we headed up a dusty Missouri back road into town to get our McDonald's breakfast. Or so we thought. The mini jeep was all over the road. Uh, just absolutely terrifying to drive on public streets, actually. I, I feel like it was a little bit of false advertising, I'm not gonna lie. I expected more out of my Chinese mini jeep. Here we have approximately 60 km divided by h. I mean, I don't know what that means. It could be 50,000 miles an hour, it could be Mach 4, I'm not really sure. The Mini Jeep absolutely hated going up hills for some reason. I mean, it's like it maybe wasn't supposed to haul a 220 pound man and his son. that the mini jeep doesn't turn particularly well with a 220 pound man sitting on top of the rear tires. I, I don't get it, you know, physics. I was never very good at it. Around here, the mini jeep started to act kind of strange. It was cutting out, it wasn't very happy. I kind of blamed it on the steep hill we were trying to climb, but it was unfortunately an indicator of things to come. one miles an hour somewhere. This road is 35 miles an hour, so. Legal. Uh-huh. We could do 31. Yeah. It's pretty close. You know, something tells me that this probably isn't made for this. Hmm. Wonder why. I don't know. Is it out of gas? There's no way it's out of gas. Yeah, plenty of gas. Although there was a suction on that tank there, so that might be something to look at. I want to check the oil. No, it's fine. Great. So there's just something wrong with it. Yeah. 
I hate small engines. I'm not a small engine guy. So, I mean, we're probably building a tremendous amount of crankcase pressure. <laughs> um, it might be hot. You know? Yeah. We're going to do 50 miles in this. So I think now it'll be, will it go to McDonald's? time yeah the carburetor fell off you know huh. how it is yeah <laughs> all right let's fix that yeah that might have been the problem the whole probably time. Well, i threw the carburetor back on and it's fixed now it's totally yeah. good after putting the carburetor back on the mini jeep with the single hose clamp that attaches it we were back on the road but the mini jeep still wasn't very happy Okay. It's kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing we can do is, uh, is let that cool off. Yeah. It's hot. Carburetor staying on? No, it's loose. It's definitely probably sucking yeah. air. Mm -hmm. At least they thought ahead. It's got a heat extractor. I think it's blown well up. God dang it. Just to rule it out, I pulled the carburetor off, checked the float adjustment, made a couple of tweaks, made it worse. JD pulled the spark plug out of it. The spark plug was burned to a crisp, which would indicate something happened in that cylinder. While we had the plug out of it, I had JD wind it over to blow any fuel out of the cylinder so we could start fresh, and then we decided we should check for spark. 
After verifying that we did have spark, although it didn't look great on that spark plug, we decided we'd give it one more shot and see if we could get her to fire up before we made the long push to my parents' house. Right there. Oh god. Um, it just rattled off. Oh god. We mm. should tighten the other three. Yeah. That's, uh... Isn't that the... Well, it's not the head gasket, but... Future me here, uh, yeah, that, uh, does secure the head to the engine block. But that's the side cover for the head. Yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know small engines. I think that's, like, the valve cover or something, like, the... Yeah. Because the valve is right there. Yep. What? Tire fall off? <laughs> Jesus. I'm pretty sure it's blown up. My parents live right around the block, so... Let's push it to their house and uh, maybe go get a spark plug. That was a very long uphill push. From mom and dad's house, I was able to commandeer a vehicle to go get a spark plug. Is this cheating? Um, <laughs> no. No, definitely not. Mission accomplished. We made it to McDonald's. Uh, not quite in the same fashion that we started, but uh, here we are. Yeah, we won. Yeah, we win. We did winners. it. All right, I put a new plug in it. Try it. Right. Make sure it's in neutral. I don't get no fire. Or no compression. Yeah. All right, wind it over. Let's see if we got any compression. We do have spark. I know that much. But not much. So blown head gasket because that nut came off and the jug is loose. Is this cheating? This is cheating? Yeah. No, I, I really don't think this is cheating. No, probably not. Yeah, we're definitely not cheating. No. Might as well see what's wrong with it, I guess. You notice that the entire underside of it is covered in oil. Mm-hmm. It may not just be a head gasket, but we'll find out real quick. Let's pull that jug off. Okay, well, let's tear it down then. Still something else holding it in, but I'm going to take this grill off so we can get to the uh, engine. Glad you uh, have that. And I've got the jug off. We can just... So we got the exhaust pipe, and then I think there's one more bolt back here that's got to come. This is the stud here that this is the one the nut fell off of. And look at that scorch mark on it. It's all toasted. So it's definitely blowing compression up the stud. I don't know if you got to pull these studs to get to to get this jug off. And I really I have no idea how this works. I'm not a not a small engine guy. But there's gotta be something that connects the cam to the crank. It's probably a little chain or something. There's another bolt here. Maybe we could pull the timing set off. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's the timing chain in here. I'm terrified. I put a timing chain in the small block Chevy. It's a our job. And it's done. This is all in miniature. In metric. Go ahead and get these timing chains bolts off. There you go. Oh, you got a hose hooked up on top yet. There you go. Woo! Let's look at the head gasket. Yep. Hmm. Look at the darkness around that. Oh, yeah. So that one was blown. And it was shoving compression up through that bolt hole. And in a little pissant engine like this, you just don't have that much compression to lose. Oh. Pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's burnt all over here. Yeah, it's been detonating really bad. There's your failure right there. That's it. There's the upper head gasket or whatever. That's it, though. Yep, that would be why she wouldn't run. Mm -hmm. 
Well, at least we found it. Yeah. We can throw a gasket kit at it. Yeah. Ten bucks is a cylinder. Look, it's fine. It's a fuel. No, it's totally fine. Wow, it's just a look at. Whoa. Wait a minute. What is? Is that the ceiling ring of the head gasket that's that trashed? I guess we'll be waiting on a gasket yeah. kit. I guess we'll just leave this all out. Or... <laughs> Damn it! I'll get one ordered. All right. Now we know about small engines. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching outside the barn. Guess we'll uh, guess we'll, we'll see you guys when we put this back together. Yay! Okay. And then we'll try again. Uh huh. Yeah. Then we'll. <laughs> no, no, we won't try again.